Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation. I didn't know what to call this. A rational equation, a quadratic, a rational quadratic, or maybe something else. Anyways, we have x over x plus 1 quantity squared and x over x minus 1 quantity squared. And their sum is 12 and we're going to solve for x. I'll be presenting at least two methods and let's see how this goes. So first method, I'm going to go ahead and expand everything. Okay, that's the kind of like the most brute force C method you can ever think of. But sometimes you have to do it. All right, so if you expand everything, you're going to get something like this. And then we can make a common denominator, right? To make a common denominator, I'm going to write x squared by x minus 1 squared and x squared by x plus 1 squared and add those and then divide it by the common denominator x plus 1 squared times x minus 1 squared. By the way, we could use difference of two squares to simplify this a little bit and maybe write it as x squared minus 1 quad squared. Not a big improvement, but um, maybe a little better. So now here x squared is a common factor, so we could probably take that out. And then that's going to be multiplied by x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus x squared plus 2x plus 1. Hopefully something will cancel out. And at the bottom, if I expand that, you're going to get x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1, and that's equal to 12. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify inside first. We get 2x squared plus 2, and then distribute the x squared. It's going to give us 2x to the fourth plus 2x squared, and then that is divided by x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. So it's kind of like a ratio of two quartic equations, which is going to end up being a quartic at the end, right? It looks like we're going to be able to divide everything by 2 because this is even. So let's go ahead and cross multiply 2x to the fourth. Maybe I should do the product first because I want to collect the larger uh, x to the fourth on the left. 12x to the fourth minus 24x squared. You know, these are some of the things that you need to think about if you're solving an equation. Maybe to save some time, I don't know. And then let's put this on the left, 10x to the fourth bring that over as well, minus 26x squared plus 12 equals 0. Nice. Even though I wasn't sure if this is going to end up being a nice quartic, it ended up being a nice quartic. And one of the nicest ones, I should say, a biquartic. Or is it biquadratic? Anyway, something like this. You get the idea. We can use substitution to turn this into a quadratic. Right? But let's divide everything by 2 first. And then... We're going to go ahead and set x squared equal to something. How about t? t is my favorite drink. I mean, variable these days. So 5t squared minus 13t plus 6 equals 0. And now since this is quadratic, we can use the quadratic formula, can't we? So t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be 120. Yay! The difference is a perfect square, which means we're going to have nice rational solutions. Beautiful. Uh, 169 minus 120 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. So from here we get 13 plus minus 7 over 10. So t can be 20 over 10, which is 2. Or t can be 6 over 10, which is 3 over 5. Obviously, you could get the same results by factoring. But uh, factoring can be done in a variety of different ways. One of which is testing all possibilities. Such as, well, when I was in high school, this is the method that we learned which obviously wasn't the most efficient, but it's kind of like this. Let me tell you, it's really long. Anyways, 5T and T, and I'm just going to test 6 and 1, right? These are, these are some of the combinations. And then I'm going to check the cross products. Do I get negative 13T? No. If I make one of both of these negative, do I get that? No, I get negative 11. So this is not going to work. Scratch it out and maybe change some of the things. And then I can go through 1, 6. I can go to 3, 2, 2, 3 with the negatives and all this. Obviously, since this is a negative, these two have to be negative. But again, this is so cumbersome, don't you think? And I don't know why they didn't teach us this when I was in school. Uh, I don't know. But then when I started teaching in high school, one of my students actually taught me this, which is called the X method. And the X method goes as follows. You go ahead and make a big giant X and then multiply these numbers first. And that's your product, which is 30. And then negative 13 is your sum. So your goal is to find two numbers whose product is 30 and whose sum is negative 13. Th this, those numbers can actually be found because 10 and 3 will work with the minus signs, obviously. And then this allows you 
to kind of break down the negative 13 into negative 10 t minus 3 t and then this becomes factorable by grouping so on and so forth you know the rest of the story hopefully but if you use grouping or factoring you're going to get the exact same solutions but quadratic formula of course is a surefire method to solve these problems great so this is not the end goal because t is equal to x squared so we kind of need to set these equal to x squared and from here we get four solutions don't we if x squared is equal to 2 or x squared is equal to 3 over 5 from here we get x equals root 2 or x equals negative root 2 and then from here x becomes positive root 3 over 5 or plus minus I, I can't I guess I could use the plus minus sign too doesn't matter no big deal oops don't put it inside the radical that's a huge mistake right obviously and it's gonna be the minus sign and this can be simplified because you can write it as root 3 over root 5 and then multiply by the conjugates and you get root 15 over 5 at the plus minus sign of course right so you can kind of work it out that way all right make sense cool now let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative approach because there is another method right i told you at least i was going to show you two depending on if i can come up with a third by the end of this i'll also share with you i have i have some ideas but i'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out so the second method is actually really cool because I'm going to call this A and I'm going to call this B. So from here I get A squared plus B squared equals 12. And some people are like, so what? Right? Exactly. So here, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to is this. A is equal to X over X plus 1. A is not that interesting, but 1 over A is interesting. Because it's X plus 1 over X. And it's actually 1 plus 1 over X. Make sense? Great. Maybe you could leave it at that as well. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. And let's do the same thing with b. b is equal to x over x minus 1. And then 1 over b is going to be x minus 1 over x, which is 1 minus 1 over x. Awesome. What do you say? What do you say? Add these up, right? Obviously, because 1 over x is going to cancel out. So a plus b is going to equal 2. And I do know that a squared, oops, sorry, not a plus b. Wait a minute. Okay, I messed up because I added the wrong things. I should be adding these two things. Oops. Okay, with one move, like swipe, everything is gone. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these up, right? Forget about that. 1 over a plus 1 over b is equal to 2. Awesome. We also know that a squared plus b squared is equal to 12. Awesome. This gives us a system, and we can solve for a and b. Therefore, we can solve for x from here. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. And the way to solve it, there's obviously a couple different approaches, but you can write this as a plus b over ab equals 2. And from here, you can write a plus b as 2ab. And then the second expression can be written as a plus b squared minus 2ab equals 12. Now, if you can replace a plus b with 2ab, that becomes 4a squared b squared minus 2ab equals 12. And then you can call this product for p for product, 4p squared minus 2p minus 12 equals 0 or 2p squared minus p minus 6 equals 0 and then from here with the quadratic formula again negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4ac that's going to be 48 uh oh we got the 7 again divided by 4 this is 7 1 plus minus 1 plus 7 over 4 1 minus 7 over 4 that's 2 that is negative 3 halves these are products, so if you just take one of these, let's say p equals 2, and you can plug in p equals 2 here to get a plus b equals 4. So a plus b is 4, a b is 2. Then you've got to find two numbers whose product is 2 and whose sum is 4, so on and so forth. You get the idea? Okay. And then from there, you can hopefully find a and b values. And then once you find the a and b values, you should be able to find the x values. Again, that's a lot of work, so I'm going to leave that up to you. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.